co-host. Co-host. Let's do it. Let's co-host. <laughs> Let's have our own show. Yeah. More wine, though. Hi, I'm here today with John Gregory Smith, um, who's a chef and food writer. Um, he's got a brilliant new book out today called Orange Blossom and Honey. Hey. And um, it's all about Moroccan food. It is, loose. all so about Moroccan food. tell me, what, what is Moroccan food? So Moroccan food is obviously North African food and it's a lovely sort of blend of North African and Arabic influence. So you get really lovely layers of fragrance and spices and wonderful aromas within the cuisine. It's delicious. Yummy. Um, and it's your second cookbook in a series. You... Yeah, so I did Turkish before, um, which is a lot sort of lighter and fresher. And then this is moving um, round and, and across to North Africa. Amazing. So tell me, what kind of food is it then? What what sort of, you what know... What is Moroccan food? Yeah. OK, so it's that quite hard. Stews. <laughs> It's a stew, in it? Tagine. So obviously, like, the classic tagine is massive, and they do cook them all over the country. So the tagine is, you know, your conical-shaped pot where you shove everything in, put the lid on and cook it, and it sort of steams and cooks slowly and beautifully. They also love couscous. They absolutely love it. And um, whereas we would just, like, shove some boiling water on it and then wait, like, and, and then eat it, they will massage couscous and oil it and spend hours making this lovely fluffy thing and then serve it with a stew. And it's like what they have on fa uh, Fridays, which is um, the religious day. So the whole family will come around, they eat couscous and they just, they just bloody love it. It's Amazing. so sweet. Even when you talk to Moroccans about couscous, they'll start smiling. Really? They just, yeah, they just love it. It's so sweet. They're like the Italians with pasta. Yeah, literally. Yeah. And then bread is really big. So loads of different breads, sweet, savoury. Um, and then actually like a lot of vegetables and salads, so they've got quite a nice diverse cuisine. Amazing. It yeah, it's really delicious. Good. And it's a lot of it's um a lot of it's very good for dinner parties because you can kind of prep ahead, get it done, and you know, enjoy your evening. Which is great because that's Funny what that, I isn't it? Know <laughs> about. I wanna know about dinner parties because hey. I'm not very good at them. Okay, why aren't you very good at dinner parties, Luce? Well, I kind of well there's lots of reasons, but I've had <laughs> Are you a success. Shit cook? Succession of uh, no, not yeah I'm not I'm not really confident that's <laughs> okay. what I would say. But you can do a recipe. Can you follow a recipe? I can follow a recipe. Okay. A I think start. I can follow one of these. Hopefully, yeah. Um, they're kind of stripped back. They're not too complicated. So yeah. Although they might be, you might look at the you know the the recipe and be like I don't necessarily know what it is. The, you'll recognise all the ingredients. There's not too many. So it's, you know yeah, you don't want to be and you can away. get them in sort of supermarkets. Yeah, everything online. Yeah, exactly. Everything everything's easy to get hold of. Yeah. Well, good, because um, I've got a few sort of failures. Go on. That, um, so, you know, I want you to help me with that. The first one, I, was, I suppose, is um, just picky eaters. So I've got quite a few friends who are just like not, you know, just, you know. Difficult. You just don't know what to cook them. Careful with what they eat. Um, I've got a, um, one of my best friends is um, a vegetarian and I love her, um, but I never know what to cook for her. Uh, so some. she's cooked me a brilliant bean stew okay. and um, I tend to cook her the bean like stew when she comes to... back with more beans. <laughs> which is just the same bean okay. stew. So I'd like something that would, you know, will help me... Um, Th that will win her over yeah. without beans. Okay, so... Funnily enough, there's a recipe in this Good. book. <laughs> and it's called Zaluk, and um, I think we've got it here. And it is this rather wonderful aubergine dish. Yeah. So Zaluk is like a smoked aubergine dish. And um, what you do is you get your aubergines and you prick it all over, put it on the gas flame, so straight onto the fire. And what that does is it will cook the insides. So it goes soft and lovely and silky, and it will suck up all that smoky flavour, like really quite intense. So you get quite a bang for your buck in terms of, you know, you're not doing that much and it tastes amazing. And you can literally see when it's done because it will, it will kind of almost go like a bit charred on the outside. And if you poke it, it'll feel so mushy and soft. And you just take that off and leave it. And that, will, that only takes like a few minutes. And then once that's all cooked down and soft and mushy, you mix it into just a really simple tomato sauce. Mm. Um, and then so you get this lovely kind of like rich stew. And then you just cook some tomatoes and onions in a pan really easily, really quickly. Add some spices, so some cumin and paprika, and then just cook that as you would any sort of like tomato sauce, to you know just to give it a bit of heat through, 
and then you add the aubergine into it and just stir it through so you get this lovely sort of smokiness and spices. And that's it, it's easy. Easy. I think you can go a step further and make it into a more beautiful meal and serve it just with lovely crisp pieces of halloumi and that gives you a kind of more complete meal. For me, what I like about halloumi is the uh, texture. So I love like the crispiness and then that sort of chewy, salty, stringy thing. Mm. And when you fry it, I think you get a nicer, crispy texture, basically. And that obviously, I think is a winner. I think it's a great dish to make anyone. And I could do this as a starter as well. Definitely, yeah. Um, as well as it could be a main course. Yes, and what's really nice about this is there's nothing worse when you've got loads of people coming over and you're just in the kitchen and you can hear everyone having loads of fun and drinking and you're just like slaving away, yeah. so boring. You can get all of this done beforehand. Yeah, so um, another of my uh, dinner party disasters is just uh, actually just not seeing my friends. So yeah. I just tend to sort of like spend quite a lot of time in the kitchen. Yeah, which um, is boring. And don't see them and yeah. it gets just, you know, soul destroying really. Yeah. Um, and then I have to put, put my head and go, oh, I'm still here. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're and having they're fun. getting drunk and having fun. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know, they're drunk, just, you know, <laughs> steaming the pasta or whatever. <laughs> So yeah, tell me, what what can I do? Okay, so when I have people over for dinner, I will get everything ready before they come. Mm -hmm. I can't bear that. I can't bear like missing out. I get really bad FOMO. <laughs> so I would pick things that you can do in advance. So like a lovely chopped salad with tomatoes and cucumber that you get ready, make your dressing separately. So all you literally have to do then is dress it. And then something like a lovely tagine or stew that you can prep all in advance is great because you can just bung it into a pot and leave it. And then really, when your guests turn up 20 minutes before you want to eat, you just start slowly reheating it. And funnily enough, right. hey. <laughs> da -da. Da -da. there's a very lovely do, dish do here. Do I need a tagine or do I need, is, God, it, no. is that, uh, no. can, I, can I do, do it in a saucepan? <laughs> like just a saucepan or a casserole. Oh, okay. So this is a really, the, one of the things that I love about my job is when I go away and I discover a dish that makes me literally just go like this with excitement. And I can't wait to sort of tell everyone this about it. It's amazing, look at it. I mean, look at that. What is, what is not to like about this? Um, this is called um, mahamma, and it's uh, a royal lamb dish from the kitchens of Fez. And um, mahamma means red. So it's about the paprika. And it's just a really simple dish of lamb cooked down with some paprika, some lovely fragrant saffron and some stock. All you have to do is sweat down some onions and garlic in a pan, quite a lot of garlic to give it a nice kind of um, fragrance. And then this recipe uses lamb shoulder, which is... Um, it's quite a tough cut of the meat, but it means that if you cook it really slowly, low and slow, yeah. then it goes really soft and lovely. So you brown off your onions, put the lamb in, you add some spices, so like we've got loads of paprika, which gives it a lovely red color and real depth of flavor. Saffron that just gives it this wonderful sort of fragrance. And then it uses powdered ginger, which you know like the, the big root ginger is mm. like kind of peppery and fresh. Powdered is, is much more mellow and they love it in Moroccan food, which is just, because you think of it more like Asian, but that adds a really lovely kind of like mellow warmth to the dish. you can get that in supermarkets. Oh God, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. So you just mix in the spices and then add just some lamb stock. And I would just, I mean, I wouldn't advocate making lamb stock, just get a stock cube, bung that in as well, and then lid on and leave it. And you literally just leave that to cook. You don't need to do anything to it. You just let that cook away really nice and slowly for a few hours so that the lamb goes really soft and beautiful. And then you take the meat out, cook the sauce down so it gets very, very rich like a gravy. So you do all of this before your guests turn up. Mm -hmm. So you've got your meat out, lovely thick sauce, bung your meat back in, go and have fun. And then when you want to eat, just give it like 20 minutes to heat up. And then what I like to do just to give it a little bit extra oomph is serve it with some almonds and extra paprika to give it a fancy garnish. Amazing. But oh. this is like, you know, you'd have all of this done beforehand. I can't wait to eat that. It's I delicious. can't wait. Um, but in terms of um, just because people get things wrong sometimes, yeah. with, you know, I mean, is what, is what do you think is the one thing that, you know, people muck up over dinner parties, <laughs> and, you know, get Doing wrong. too much, trying to do too much. Like if you're having 10 of your mates over, you want to enjoy your mates. You don't want to be like trying to do something that's like really technical or millions of ingredients or something that you have to do last minute, like a souffle. Just make life really easy. Choose something that's really simple to make, like 
Jamie was the king of doing these like big lovely platter salads, all that kind of stuff. Mm. You just get ready beforehand and enjoy being with your mates. Mm. You know, if you go to a restaurant, you would enjoy being with your mates. It would be the same at home. And do you think, because I've had a few sort of like actual recipe disasters Have where you? I've actually just cooked something that... Yeah. Name uh, and we, shame, like, what? <laughs> Whose recipe were they? Domino's! <laughs> <laughs> Quick! Um, yeah, it's, you know, so um, what would you suggest I do? I think it's just about when... keeping it simple because hopefully the recipe... Your recipe. My, I mean, are... my recipes all work, fact. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully the recipes will work, but I mean, it could be that you've chosen something that's really technical or, you know, involves lots of different stages or... It's just a, just a fussy, some things are fussy to cook. So just keep mm. it really simple. So just don't ditch, if, any, if, anything's, if anything's got a technique you've never done before, don't. Oh, just don't bother. And you wouldn't recommend uh, trying the recipe out before life doing is, it. Sort of like no, a life's too run. short for that. You I mean, reckon. that's a bit dealier, isn't it, being that organised, you do a, <laughs> like, a technical trial run for your friends turn out. No, balls to that. Just do something that's really easy, yeah. that you feel confident doing, that you know is simple and lovely and delicious. Mm -hmm. Because re really, you want to enjoy being with your mates, not slaving over the stove. Yeah. Boring. So, because um, I've really been working hard, toiling, yeah. toiling in the kitchen, yeah. um, making your recipes, um, do I really, really have to cook? Well, Luce, as we've been through, my recipes are very simple, so yes, you do. <laughs> Thing is, dessert is the end of a meal, so you want to go out on a high point, because yeah. everyone remembers a really good dessert. Yeah, and, true. And um, I do true. have, there is one thing that if you really can't be bothered to make dessert, do you want to know, like, the best yes, thing please, ever? Yes, please, come on. <laughs> M&M's. Literally, <laughs> if you put a bowl of M&M's in the table instead of dessert, You've they're not Moroccan. No, they're really un-Moroccan, but people go nuts <laughs> for them. And even after dessert, they still everyone really loves things like that, and it's a nice little, uh, a nice tip. And the table looks cool as well. But I do have a really nice dessert here, that's a cheesecake actually, and um, I ate it in a lovely um, Riyadh in Fez. It's a really delicious mm. rose water and lemon cheesecake. So you basically just make a very simple lemon cheesecake. And actually, if you can't be bothered to make one, you can buy really good cheesecake bases. Yeah. And, you know, life should be easy. So if that's what you need to do, just go and buy one. And then just concentrate on garnish. Pimp it and make it look amazing. Pimp and then it. tell everyone you made it. Exactly. Yeah. And what, what this is... Well, is obviously. It? Exactly, obs. So this is really easy. So you've got your cheesecake base, and then mm. just to make it a bit more luscious, just whisk up some cream into soft peaks, mm. but with a little bit of icing sugar to make it sweet, and then rose water. Have you ever used rose water no. before? So, I mean, it's in the name. It's, it's rose it's water. It's Bake Off quite a lot. I use it on I Bake don't Off. Want bake off. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's really boring. <laughs> um, <laughs> So rose water is just, um, it literally is a rose water, so it smells a bit like old ladies and it's quite full on when yeah. you um, open the bottle. It's but very Moroccan. Really, really Moroccan, but what mm. it gives is a really beautiful floral note. So just like a tablespoon is plenty mm. and you'll get this lovely smell coming through, which is just delicious. So you whisk all that into soft peaks, spoon that over the top of your cheesecake so it looks all luscious. Mm. Chop up some figs and some orange, bash out some pomegranate seeds or even easier, open a packet with them in and just garnish it to make it look gorgeous. And then just get some runny honey and just drizzle from quite high. So you get a lovely sort of spooning of honey drizzling down over the top. A bit of a chef -y, Little chef, -y chef -y like drizzling this, yeah. like that. Okay, I think I can do that. <laughs> I think you can, I think you've got it covered. A little right. bit of whisking, get that done, then just sort of... Yeah, yeah, no, You, you know, can, you can pump with one that. hand, drink with another and you're off. I can do that. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, and then the last thing is, I mean, the one thing I say is uh, there is a bit, I mean, although, I'll, you know, these these recipes are really simple. Really simple. Um, I will be toiling away in the kitchen a little bit. Yes, yes. Um, probably less so now with these. I hope so, yeah. Um, but what I normally do is when, the, when guests come is, you know, just serve a few bowls of crisps yeah. and a bottle of wine. It's not a no-no, because -no, everyone loves crisps and wine. <laughs> What's <laughs> uh, I like Doritos, actually. But um, I, think you I think you can do better. Yeah. So things like just grill some pitters, toast them in the toaster, slice them up, yeah. get some lovely hummus, and put your hummus in a bowl, drizzle over some olive oil, put some pine nuts on, so it looks okay. a little bit more impressive. And then also everything would look lovely with just little bowls of olive. So you can, you know, little, little, it's like a little meze mix. It's delicious. 
Yummy. And easy, super easy. So, Luce, we've done it. This is your dinner party nailed, I think. So we've got lovely Zalouk with crisp halloumi. We've got this lovely, rich royal lamb tagine. Some hummus, which isn't Moroccan, but delicious nonetheless. And this badass cheesecake that we pimped. It's amazing. It's so pretty. Uh, look All at of it. it is so pretty. It looks it's gorgeous, right? very professional. Very and professional. The only one thing we haven't got, no, no alcohol. No, I know, no booze. No, well, you know. What are we going to do? <laughs> I don't know. Let's go home now. <laughs> try this, though. <laughs> yes. In the absence of booze, try this. OK. This is just... Go on. I'm going to get... I want this. I love the cheese. Mm. Oh, it's so smoky. Is it good? Mm. I'm so easy to do. It's really easy. Mm. Try a bit with the cheese, because you get that lovely, like, sort of saltiness with that smoky aubergine. These really nice textures. Mm. Mm. Fussy eaters, I reckon you'd be laughing with mm. that. And if, if you had that, like, as a starter, that's amazing, but also if you had that with like a lovely crisp salad. And you just literally just put it put it all out and get guests to sort of help themselves. Yeah, I think that's quite nice. Well, you can do it individually if you want to be a bit mm. more, you know, like that's your plate of food, don't share. Yeah, But yeah. it's quite nice. And then this mm. is the lamb. Go on. I love this. I think it's just so... It I'm like eager divine. to get in. Get out of my way, it hurry up. <laughs> I mean, it's just so good, isn't it? Mm. It makes you just... Mm. It's just delicious. Mm. It's rich and mm. a little bit sweet, a little mm. savoury. Get the saffron, mm. the paprika. It's pretty good, isn't it? It's pretty good. And then all I would do is serve that with just, I think, buttery couscous. And maybe some steamed vegetables. Oh, that sounds really boring, but it's there's so much flavour yeah, in that. You, don't you just need, don't need it. You don't need anything. Yeah. Right. And then... The hummus. This, uh, I, I'd do that. I'd definitely do that tomorrow or tonight. The swirl. Yeah. Look at it. A swirl of joy. Because very chefy, John. <laughs> <laughs> but then you can put loads of lovely stuff in there. You could even put your olives in there. That'd be mm. quite cool. Mm. Um, and then this mm. is the cheesecake. Gorgeous. I think it looks so stunning. It's gorgeous. And that's just cut so gorgeous. A slice. It just looks like a proper sort of like posh deli one. <laughs> you buy. Such a win. Go on. Well, I don't really know what I'm doing now. Like, let's just... <laughs> just use a hand. Use a hand. Use a yeah, hand. Yeah, go on. Mm. Oh, good. Mm. That's well, good. Can you get the rose water? Mm. Yeah, but not too, it's not too overpowering. No. You know, I, I was a bit worried about rose water. I thought it might, mm. you know. Well, it can smell like... Um, it's a really weird analogy, but it can smell like old ladies. If mm. You remember, like... <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say, yeah. not in a weird way. Um, but if you just put a little bit in like that, you just you just it just hits the back yeah. of your palate a tiny bit. You just get a touch. Just and that lovely head. sort of scent of it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So yeah. thank you so much. I am completely clued up on dinner parties now. Right. When's my invite? Well, my friends are over <laughs> now. Oh, no, and, I, I might not uh, <laughs> No, off you go. Off but you I'm go. done then. I'm going to go get my booze and go. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much. Oh, pleasure. Helping and um, helping me out, and um, yeah, you can stay. <laughs> you can stay for tea. <laughs> for tea, but not this. <laughs>